Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now let me start by saying this. This is a review, not a sales commercial. I got a lot of stuff to talk about, so it's gonna be kinda long. Grab your popcorn and your thought juice and get comfortable. Now I'm also gonna be comparing this phone to a lot of other phones, because when I say I don't like something, I don't wanna just say that, I wanna show you why. Also, there's no script, there's no editing. I'm just gonna talk to y'all the same way I talk to my friends because we're all friends on my channel. So let's get started. First things first, shout out to White Shoes, back in the building. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. White shoes. I love my white Calm shoes. down. Now, let me answer the question that everybody been asking me. Where do I rank the Google Pixel 6 Pro versus my top five Android phones. Let me show you. Number one on my list is the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Now at the end of this video, we're gonna do some phone talk. I'm gonna show you why. All right, this is number one. Number two on my list, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5 Gangster Alpha Omega Supreme. Number three on my list, the Oppo X3. Number four on my list, the OnePlus 9 Pro. And number five, Big Bertha, the Google Pixel 4 XL. Where do I rank the Pixel 6? This is now number three. All right, this is number three on my list, right behind the Galaxy S21. Now, here's the thing. I also have a separate ranking for work phones, okay? Now, for work phones, including the iPhone, for work phones, I only have one number one phone. And that's been the Pixel 4 XL. That's why I call it Big Bertha. All right, this is all reliable. This is my everyday work phone. Clean, smooth, reliable security. This is the number one work phone. And now the Pixel 6 Pro is my new number one work phone. And we're gonna talk about why in a minute. But as usual, there's a couple of things that I don't like. So let's talk about those first. Now, usually I would start off with the price. I would say a thousand bucks. The price is TGH, too goddamn high. Y'all know me, I don't co-sign any candy bar style phones for over a thousand bucks. Shout out to Google. This phone starts at 900 bucks. So I'm not gonna say the price is TGH. The price is JR, all right, just right. But here's the thing. For 900 bucks, I don't like this. All right, this is what I don't like. The presentation, all you get inside, is the charging cable, OTG, and some usual books and shit. I don't like that. All right, for 900 bucks, we should get a charger in the box. Now, I've been saying this a lot, put the charger in the box, and here's why. You got fast charge. It's not like back in the days when 10 or 20 watt charging was the standard, everybody got a brick laying around. If you're gonna advertise a phone with 30 watt fast charging, give me the charger. All right, we got an old saying in the hood, don't talk about it, be about it. Same thing with Xiaomi. Okay, if you're gonna sell me a phone and claim that it has 120 watt fast charging, show me, put the charge in the box. I right? instead of Xiaomi, show me. We're gonna call this the show me phone. I right? put the charge in the box. If you notice a lot of mid range phones, y'all seen that real me phone the other day. They come in with the charge in the box, the headphones, the dongle, a case, screen protector. For 900 bucks, look at this unboxing experience. All right, look, now look, I've been unboxing phones on YouTube for over a decade. The unboxing experience right now is getting so watered down and, and dry. It, you know, it's no more excitement. Remember when you spent a thousand bucks on a phone? It, it felt like you spent a thousand bucks on a phone. Even when you bought those Galaxy S9s, Galaxy S8s, and it came with that big box and you had the headphones and not only the usual books and shit, you had pamphlets, right? Actual brochures, right? You had brochures and pamphlets and all that. You know, you sat down with a glass of wine, you opened up your phone. It was a nice experience. Now this is like opening up a hamburger from McDonald's, all right? This is like, this is like opening up a Big Mac. There ain't really nothing to see. Uh, you just open the phone, take it out, peel it. Now I understand, okay, save the earth, okay, save the environment. Every now and then, I do tend to walk around on the earth. So, I, you know, I do want to save it. All right, black people say earth. If y'all hear me say earth, E-A-R-F, earth. All right, there's a difference between earth and earth. All right, if you get earth slammed, <laughs> it's, it's a big difference between getting earth slammed and earth slammed. Just remember that. 
like I said, I do care. But now, look, on a side note, I try to make these reviews as fun as possible because this is all nerdy shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to take the tension off, take the edge off. Let's have a little fun. Let's all relax. Let's not get emotional. Okay? Let's just, you know, let's, let's try to have a little fun. Here's the presentation. I don't like that. No dongle in the box. No headphones. No case. Now, look, we talk about the Pixel Buds. They not all that. All right, the Pixel Buds are not all of that. I'm sure Google has a big surplus of them shits laying around in the warehouse because ain't nobody really buying those like that. For the flagship phones for 900 bucks, they should have threw the Pixel Buds in here. All right, they could have did something like this. All right, shout out to Google. They sent me some Team Pixel socks. I don't give a fuck about the socks. Put the charge in the box. All right, this is what I care about. If I'm spending 900 bucks, put a charge in the box. The dongle. All right, no headphone jack. That shit's whack. Hashtag bars. A lot of people don't have the dongle. Now, they used to give you the dongle when they first took away the headphones, uh, the headphone jack with most phones. I'm wondering why not anymore. All right, nobody has a thousand dongles laying around. I know I don't. I got like two dongles, and both of them is mad dirty because they're usually white. They're all dirty. They look all beat up. Nobody want to spend extra money after you just drop 900 bucks. So I appreciate Google for dropping the price from under a thousand bucks to 900. But come on, give us some, give us some more excitement with the presentation. Give us something. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention when I named my top five Android phones, I'm not talking about these. Okay, these are niche products. These are, you know, these are my attention getter and my attention keeper. All right, when I go out, I rock these phones. But I don't consider these phones. These are flip products. These are kind of like, like I said, niche products. My top five candy bar Android phones. Okay, so no charge in the box, no dongle, no case, no headphones, no fancy presentation. I don't like that. Okay, I do like to save an environment, but I don't like that. Next, now look, I got a bunch of dislikes, but two of them that I'm about to talk about right now are my real two dislikes. Everything else is kind of petty, and some of it can be changed with third-party software. But here's my two main dislikes. Number one, no face unlock. I don't like that. I, I don't like that at all. Now, let me show you something. All of my top five Android phones that I just named, all of these, I, I, these are my top four, actually. All of these have face unlock and on-screen fingerprint sensor. I like the option of having both, okay? I don't like not having face unlock. When I'm in the house and I'm eating my fried chicken and I got grease all over my fingers, I don't want to use the fingerprint sensor. I want to use face unlock. And not only do I want to use face unlock, I want to do it like this. Now, y'all remember the Pixel 4? I want to just pick it up and look at it. Y'all seen that? I just want to pick it up and bung, be right in the phone. I don't want to have to press the button. All right, if my phone is on the table, I just want to check it, bung, just like that. No face unlock. Google, I do not understand your decision to not put face unlock. Now, people were sitting me up in the comments like, oh, they didn't put face unlock because then you would have had to put the notch. What What are you talking about, bro? You see any notch on this? This is a Pixel 4, no notch. I'd rather have this little bit of forehead right here. Right, y'all see that little forehead? I'd rather have that forehead with a face unlock that works as fast and smooth as this. I'll even take a little notch if I had to. But face unlock. All right, I just knocked down my Galaxy Fold. <laughs> I try to play it off cool behind the camera. I just, my heart just, <gasps> Galaxy Fold. All right, it's good. This guy just looked, it's good. Okay, it's good. Let me calm down. Face unlock. I need that option, okay? For 900 bucks, why not have both? Okay, now, last year, same thing. Face unlock, but no fingerprint sensor. What's with the forcing us to have to choose between one or the other? Why should we have to choose? You got all these companies out here again, right? all of these companies out here giving you the option of face unlock and fingerprint sensor. Face unlock should be mandatory on all flagship phones, okay? Next, I don't like, so let me say that correctly, no face unlock, I don't like that. Next, now this is the number one thing that I don't like about this phone, and this is why I wanted to wait to get my retail version before I did this review, because I had two issues. First, let me talk about that real quick. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, how come I didn't do an unboxing of the review unit? Because Google had this bullshit embargo that you can't really show anything on the phone. And y'all know my unboxing videos be like 20 minutes long. I don't want to just unbox the phone and be like, okay, here it is. 
like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends. No, when I unbox something, I wanna show you the features, play with some of the software, at least breeze through some of the OS. I ain't gotta do a full review, but I wanna show you how it looks. I, it's kind of like a tease if I just open it up and say, okay, here's the phone, like my video. There's, there's really nothing to like. And especially with a little boring presentation like this, it really wasn't worth it. So that's why I wanted to wait. But the second reason why I wanted to wait is because when I started using the review unit, I had two issues. The first issue I had was forced closing. I had a lot of forced closing on some of my Google apps. Now I uninstalled them, reinstalled them, had the same problem, they pushed out an update, and then I had that problem went away. So that day, when I could have did my full review, I was still having that same issue. Every time I go to my YouTube Creative Studio, y'all know I'm the type of guy that's always in the comments. Every time I try to scroll down the comments, it would force close. I, so I, I wanted to make sure that that was a known issue before I start bashing the phone. Let me get my retail version and see if that issue persists. After the update, that issue disappeared. But I was still having another issue with the retail version, which is the next thing that I don't like, the fingerprint sensor. All right, the fingerprint sensor on this. Now look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose my words wisely. I'm not gonna say trash, all right, because it's definitely not trash. But it's finicky, it's very finicky. It's not the fastest, smoothest fingerprint sensor in the game. This fingerprint sensor reminds me of when Samsung first got the on-screen fingerprint sensors. Remember everybody was like, oh, that's so innovative, that's so nice, this is the future. And then when you started using it, and it wasn't working 100% of the time, it was like, okay, you know, I like this, but uh, put the shit back on the back of the phone. At least it's, you know, kind of ugly, it's an eyesore, but at least it works 100% of the time. I need 100% of the time working as opposed to 90% of the time. Now, the retail version, the fingerprint says, I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna say it's trash, but it's just not the fastest, it's not the smoothest. Here's where my comparison comes into play as opposed to something like this. Now this is a fingerprint sensor right here. Part of having the fingerprint sensor is just touching the screen and it just opens. You don't wanna have to look at it. Look at, you see, we're gonna talk more about this Xiaomi phone in a minute. This phone is almost too fast for some of my operations. All right, now look, you can just tap it like that and it opens. You don't wanna have to go like this for it to open. Now look, if you really think about it, if you really think about it, every time you put your finger on it, you press it and hold it, it'll work 100% of the time. But part of the fun of having a fingerprint sensor is that you just wanna open your phone. Look, and I, I'm gonna show you another thing. I, there's two more things that I don't like that just happened just now if y'all caught that. Part of having a fingerprint sensor is your phone just opening without having to look at it. You wanna just pick up your phone, like, now look, I'm not even gonna look at the screen. If I go like this, bang, it just opens. Now, I'm gonna look at it. I did that from behind camera without looking. I was just trying to see if I could get it right on the first try. But this is one of those tap fingerprints. This is how fingerprint sensor is gonna work. Now look, look how fast this phone is, bro, are you kidding me? This is how fingerprint sensor is supposed to work. This fingerprint sensor right here, it's just, like I said, I'm not gonna say it's trash, but it just needs to be faster, smoother, and more reliable. You shouldn't have to concentrate. Whenever, whenever, whenever you wanna turn your phone on, you shouldn't have to look at the screen and be like, okay, I'm about to press my finger. Let me press it and wait for that little animation. You wanna just go like this. Now, sometimes you could get the, the quick taps. Sometimes you could do that. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. And I know some of y'all typing right now, oh, you're doing it wrong. You have to press your finger and hold it. That's not the point. You shouldn't have to do that. Uh, you shouldn't have to do that. You should just be able to pick up your phone, go like that, and it should just open. You shouldn't have to press and hold. All right, I don't like that. All right, so fingerprint sensor, I don't like. I don't like it at all. Not trash, but I don't like it. Could be better. Next. Now, this is another thing that I don't like about this phone. The curved display, okay? Now, I don't know what's up with all of these Android manufacturers coming out with these big curved screens. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, Apple Mafia, this is your moment to shine. This is one of the reasons why I love the iPhones and Android. A lot of things we shouldn't take from Apple, but this is one of those things. There's two things we need to take from Apple. This is one of them. Flat panels. People love the flat panels. I, now look, I could now keep this in mind. This is just my personal opinion. Let me say this too, because I really want to address this. When I make my reviews, you don't have to agree with me. I, if you disagree with, with something that I'm saying, go to the comment section, 
We're all friends. I welcome the disagreements. I welcome the phone wars. If you like something that I don't like, tell me why. Let's have a discussion. We're all friends. Let's be re respectful with each other and have a nice phone war. This is why I'm here. All right? You don't have to come in the comment section and be like, yo, bro, I'm sorry, but I disagree with you. Why are you sorry? That's your opinion. This is my opinion. I want to hear all of y'all opinions. I read every comment, but here's my opinion. My opinion, especially as a guy who has big hands and fat fingers, I don't like curved displays. Now, this one ain't as curved as this Mi 11. Th that's one of the things, even though this is my favorite phone, if this phone had a 100% flat panel, bro, <laughs> it would be game over. But the curve, the curve displays, I, home screen rotation, I like that. I like that. But the curve displays is something I just don't like. And a lot of times I'll be doing stuff on my phone and it feels like the phone is frozen. And I'll be like, all right, here we go with the bullshit. The phone is not frozen. What's happening is sometimes I hold the phone in a certain angle and I'm actually touching the display and keeping it from moving. All right, so the curve displays, shout out to all these Android manufacturers. We know you can do it. All right, you've already proved it. But um, that fad and that wave is over. I right, come back to the big flat panel phones like on the Pixel. All right, a nice big flat screen, easy to text, easy to hold, makes the phone feel less slippery. Although it does look sexy, you know, when the, when the apps kind of wrap around the side, it does look sexy. But if you're going to have a curved display, then you need to have edge panels. All right, you need to have edge panels like on the 5 Gangster. Part of that fun of having a curved display all right, look, let's see. Let's open this one up. Now, let, let's check the fingerprint sensor on this one. Bong. You see, this is a tap fingerprint sensor also. All right, no tap and hold. This is a tap fingerprint sensor. But if you're going to have curved displays, at least have it curved for a reason. When you use the edge panel and you have that curve and you feel it, that's cool. All right, that's cool. I, I don't mind having that. But just having curved displays for no reason, I ain't really with that. All right, so curved displays, I don't like that. Now, the rest of my dislikes are gonna be kind of petty, but y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt. So I gotta talk about them. And some of these things <laughs> I think are petty, some of y'all might think are petty, but this might be the deciding factor of whether you buy this phone or not for some of y'all at home. So I gotta mention this stuff. Okay, so here's the next thing that I don't like. Ladies, you're not gonna like this neither. The power button on the side is too goddamn high. <laughs> it's too high. Now, if y'all see me playing with this just now, every time I go to turn the phone off, I keep doing this. Now watch this. Let's line up all of the heavy hitters together. Okay? Look at all the heavy hitting phones. Look at the power button on the Pixel. It's the highest one up. All right, now I know y'all really can't see that, but you gotta take my word for it. The Pixel phone has the highest power button on the phone. I don't like that, all right? The power button is too high, and I also don't like when you put the power button on the same side as the volume rocker. So many times I go to turn this phone off and I keep pressing the volume rocker. All right, now I like to have my phone on silent when I'm doing some stuff, and I keep going like this and pressing the volume rocker. I don't like that, all right, I don't like that. If you notice, all right, on this phone, on the Oppo, rock, volume rocker on one side, power button nice and low, okay? One plus, power button nice and low, volume on the other side. The Galaxy, volume rocker, nice and high, out of the way, power button nice and low, okay? The Mi 11, Power button, nice and low on one side, volume above it. You see, but, but the power button should be low. So when you're holding your phone like this, you shouldn't have to stretch up, it should be nice and low. Okay? It's funny because even on the Pixel 4, this power button is up, <laughs> power button is up pretty high. Again, <laughs> look how high this power button is. This might, this might be even higher this is even higher than the Pixel 6. Yo, Google, what's up with y'all with these high power buttons, bro? I, bring it down some. Bring it down some. Same thing, iPhone, power button is a little bit high, but you got separation. You got the volume on one side, power button on one side. So this way, there's no mistakes. Little shit like that gets on my nerves. When I pick up a phone and I hit the power button and the fingerprint sensor, if I press the fingerprint sensor and it doesn't immediately work, that gets on my nerves. If I go like that and it doesn't work, I'm like, fuck! I don't, I don't like that. If I go to power it off and I go like this instead, little things like that is what makes me not want to carry around a phone. Those little little things like that, they start to add up as as uh, gripes. They start to add up as gripes. All right, so the power button is too high. Another thing that I don't like, all right, so that's next. P power button too high. Next, now, as far as the glossy back on the glossy back finishes, 
it looks sexy. I'm not gonna really say I don't like it, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This frosted glass back, uh, the frosted, yeah, the frosted uh, glass back on the Pixel 4, this is the way to go. Look at, look, now this phone is white. I got the orange one also. It just looks and stays so nice and clean and fingerprint resistant as opposed to putting your phone down. All right, now you got your margarita right here. You get you got your little watch on. You're getting ready to take your flex pic. Hold on a second, hold on a second, bro. Hold on a second. Don't take the picture. I got to go like this. Now, you don't always walk around with this. So I find myself in a restaurant having to take my shirt. Let's <laughs> say I'm rocking a jersey. I got to take my jersey and go like this. All right, now let me get my flex picture. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, the glossy backs. Now, it doesn't look as bad with the sort of sunny. I just look, You can still see it. But it's not as bad. The black version, this is a fingerprint magnet. All right, so I don't like the uh, glossy back. Next, customization. Now, you can you can do... Ah, you fu All right. Anger management. Okay, let me calm down. Customization. Now, you can customize a lot. Y'all seen the new widgets. We all seen them. All right, now, here's one of my favorite widgets, that new YouTube music that kind of looks like a turntable. That's pretty dope. The new clock widget is dope. Okay, you got the new uh, Snapchat widget. I got my text message widget. Customization on this phone is pretty good, but nowhere near as it should be. Now, this is one of those things that you could change with third-party apps and Nova Launcher and all that other jazz. But here's the thing that I don't like about this phone. The Google bar at the bottom, you can't move it. Okay, you can't move it. Now, if you look at any one of my other phones, Watch the face unlock. Bang. Any one of my other phones, I like to have the Google bar at the top. That's just the way I rock. I don't like having the Google bar at the bottom, and I don't like the fact that it, it just stays right there. Okay, I, I don't like that. Now, I do like the fact that you can change the wallpaper, and when you change the wallpaper, all of your icons change and all that. Pretty shit. But that ain't really my thing, right? I like my icons to look like stock icons okay i don't like all the fancy colors and all that usually i like to have a black wallpaper let me see if it, let me let me pull out my galaxy real quick now see with the galaxy you got the live wallpapers customizations up the wazoo do y'all say wazoo all right customizations up the wazoo all right customizations up the keister i'm bringing out all new words today i like this is how all of my android phones i like them to look all right let me pull out let me see let me pull out the oppo all right, now with the Oppo, I left this wallpaper on because it's, it's kind of it's kind of lively. But I like to have my Google widget at the top, my beautiful widgets pro, uh, weather animation, just like that. All right, that's how I like to have all of my phones. I don't like the fact that you can't customize this. You should be able to move this Google bar. Maybe you don't even want it. All right, maybe you don't want it, or maybe you want it at the top. You should be able to move it. Now, the next thing I don't like about the customization is the always-on display. Now, I appreciate them for putting always on display on the phone. All right. Apple Mafia, eat your heart out. Y'all still don't got always on displays. It's only been about eight years since they've been available. But hey, it is what it is. Always on display should be customizable. Let me give you some examples now. Here's my Galaxy phone. Look at that always on display. All right. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very humble guy. That's why I got a picture of myself. All right. That's one always on display on this one. <laughs> Let's see the always on display on this one. This one is the neon lights. All right. When you put your phone down on the table, it shouldn't look like everybody else's phone. Let's see what else I got. Now, this one. This is one of my favorites. The super wallpaper. Let me let it turn off. Watch the always on display on this one. Boom. The earth. All right. We got some earth. Again, let me see which one is on this one. All right, on this one, we got Saturn. I right, watch the always on display kick in. Now, I know some of y'all think that, oh, this is trivial. This is petty stuff. But when you got your phone in your desktop dock, you might want to see a picture of your cat. You might want to see a picture of your, your family members. You want to see something other than just this. That looks so bland. All right, this is very bland, very boring. Just the time, the date. Your notification. Now look at the notifications. They're not even vibrant. Let me show you something else. Look at the notifications on this one when I turn on the always on display. I right, watch when it pops up. If I have any notifications. Of course I won't because I'm in the middle of doing a video. Of course I don't. But the notifications on these and on the Galaxy. Let's see. Maybe do I have... Okay, look at the Galaxy. Nice and colorful, vibrant. That's what you want. All right, so 
Not too much customization on this phone other than changing the uh, wallpapers and the icons. That's cool, but I want to customize my home screen. I know third-party apps, you could do that. I know. But I want to customize my always-on display. Next, let's talk about the camera. All right, now, this is one of the best point-and-shoot cameras on the market, arguably the best portrait mode on the camera. But on the camera, there's no pro mode. All right, let me show you something real quick. All right, let's go to the camera real quick. All right, for your camera features, you got night sight. Excellent. You got motion photos. We'll talk about those in a minute. You got portrait. You got regular camera, video, and you got modes. So you got panorama, photos, fit, and lens. There's no pro mode. Okay, now, honestly, I'm not really making a big gripe about that because this is one of those phones that you don't need pro mode. You'll probably make it worse <laughs> unless you're a real photographer. You ain't gonna need pro mode with this phone because of the software, but there's no macro. There's no macro camera. Now, I read a funny comment on one of my um, posts. Somebody was like, oh, now all of a sudden that Apple has the macro camera. Now all of a sudden everybody wanted on the Pixel. Yes, of course. The fuck is wrong with you? Of course, if a new phone comes out with a new feature, you want that on your phone. There shouldn't be anything on an, I on an iPhone that we don't have on an Android phone. It shouldn't work like that. And now look, a lot of y'all with your iPhones, y'all think macro is new. Macro is not new. I can show you budget phones that I did from Android that have macro phones, uh, macro photos, macro cameras. But the best macro camera right now on the Android phones is the X3. And not only does this have the best macro camera, I wanna show y'all something real quick. You see, like, you see how it switched to say macro? When you get in, it says macro. Look, the, the macro camera is ridiculous. Not only does it have that, it has the microscope camera. I th Now, this ain't macro, this is microscope. Look at this, hold up. Watch it now, y'all wanna see something gross? Look at this. Look at my skin. Yo, this is so gross. This is so gross, but I love it. I want to show y'all something real quick. Now, look at this. I know what you say. This, ah, this is on my body. All right, if you ever have ashy skin and you wonder, like, why is my skin ashy? Let me, uh, did, I, did I save that photo? I just took it a little while ago. All right, yeah, you, yeah, nah, you, this is what ashy skin looks like. All right, when you have ash, if you put under the microscope, this is on your skin. All right, this camera, I, I I love it and hate it. I love it because it's so much fun. But every time I take a macro photo of some food or a part of my body, I want to cut that part off. I can't believe it. I love it. But the point I'm trying to make is macro cameras. That's something that is fun to play with, especially if you're into photography. You're going to want to take your macro shots. You see everybody with their iPhones, the butterfly pictures, the picture of the, the eyeballs. Macro cameras should be on your flagship phone. And another thing that's missing from the camera that I don't like is no cinematic mode. Now, we, I'm just calling it cinematic mode because Apple's doing it the best, but Samsung Nights, I stand down and stand by. We got portrait video. I portrait video, cinematic mode, pretty much the same thing, although in my testing, Apple is really doing it the best. Now the portrait mode videos on the Galaxy, they do come out dope, but sometimes the photos, are, are the, the focus is a little finicky with the iPhone, and let me say this, if you got an iPhone and you're not playing around with cinematic mode, a 13 Pro or a Pro Max, you're doing yourself a disservice, all right? You're missing out on one of the best features of the iPhone, cinematic mode. I got videos of white shoes playing around that look like a movie, all right? It looked like somebody came with a professional camera and shot a movie of shoes playing around with some cables. I got videos of Amaya from her birthday. Cinematic mode is just crazy. Portrait mode video, same thing. Why not have that on the Pixel? This is one of the best cameras out. You can push that through a software update, add that as one of the features, because I'm pretty sure with the Tensor chip, the processing power is there. Give us portrait mode video. So this way, when your iPhone friends come around and they shooting those videos looking extra cinematic, looking extra luxurious, your video is gonna be nice and smooth, but they're not gonna have that bokeh effect. You're gonna be missing out. All right, you're gonna be missing out. All right, so no macro camera, no pro mode, and no bokeh effect. The pro mode, mm, scratch that. I don't really care about the pro mode. Just no macro and no uh, cinematic mode, also known as live focus mode, also known as portrait video. It's not there, I don't like that. Next, let's talk about battery charging speeds. Now, I did some testing. Hold on a second, let me just get a little wipe down. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I did some testing last night and the night before. Battery charging speeds. Now we're gonna talk about the battery on this phone. The battery on this phone 
is the Android equivalent of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now the iPhone 13 Pro Max, all right, Samsung Knights, stand down and stand by. We gotta give credit where credit is due. This is the battery beast right here. But the Pixel, now let me save the battery parts that I do like for my like segment of the video. But as far as dislikes, the charging speed. All right, the charging speed on this is not the best. Okay, zero to 38% in 30 minutes. Zero to 38% in 30 minutes. Now, if you think about that, the Mi 10 Ultra from last year, zero to 100% in 29 minutes. The Mi 11, zero to 100% in 36 minutes. Okay, zero to 70% on this phone for one hour. I right, saw so in one hour, you'll get 70% to charge it from zero to 100% over two hours. I don't like that, all right? It should have a faster charge. Now, I know what y'all getting ready to say, Oh, but what about the battery degradation? No, nah, nah, nah. Let me show you something, all right? That's called features and options. Let's go to settings real quick. We'll go over to battery. I want to show y'all something real quick. Let's go to, let me pull up battery real quick. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Okay, here we go. Battery saver. All right, we go to adaptive preferences. Now, this should be an option. You see the same way you could turn this off and on? Adaptive charging. Now, if you turn on adaptive charging, this will slow down your charging rate overnight. So this way you don't have to worry about battery degradation. It's gonna charge your phone slowly overnight. You'll be able to use this phone for the next five years if you're so inclined. But they should have a feature that you turn it on and now you got warp speed charging. So this way when you travel in or say you just came home from work at eight o'clock and you're going to a concert and you're getting ready to go out and you might spend the night overnight, you might get into some scumbag shit, you're not coming home. They should have a feature that, okay, the phone does have fast charging, turn this on, and now you get your shit shower and shave charging speeds. Okay, this phone needs to charge faster. This is 2021. Okay, phones should be charging from zero to 100% in 45 minutes and under. All right, and zero to 70% should be 30 minutes. Okay, this one, 30 minutes is only gonna get you 38% from a dead battery. I would like to have seen a nice option. Okay, you know what? Let me turn on warp speed charging, plug it in, and get the warp charge. And then day to day, okay, now I'll leave it on adaptive charging, but put on a charger overnight, charge up nice and slowly, but save my battery. All right, so the battery charging speeds on this, they should be faster. And another thing I wanna mention, even though it's not available right now, but the wireless charging speeds are ridiculously slow. I right, don't even bother trying to charge, just use the wireless charge for show on your desktop. Cool, but don't try to fast charge your phone with the wireless charge on this. It's retardedly slow. I right, oh, oh, let, oh, let me, I'm sorry. Right, now, let me try not to get canceled. I use the R word. I, I'm old school, man. When I say retarded, I'm not trying to talk about people with special needs. I'm sorry. I know. I, I said that in another video. Somebody sent me a 12 page essay to my email. And I, I, like I said, I read all my viewer response. I genuinely don't mean anything when I say retarded. I'm just old school. That's just one of the words that I use. I right, say so anybody who has special needs, children and family members, no disrespect. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to phase that word out of my vocabulary the same way I'm trying to phase out the, the F word because I'm old school, the F word, we just mean stupid. But I'm trying to phase all of these words out. So y'all gotta bear with me, I right, bear with me. <laughs> fucking cancel culture, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll fuck around again. Y'all can't cancel me though. I, I'm uncancelable. All right, because I'm already in your fucking bloodstream. That's why every time I post a video, if I post a video at nine o'clock, I got 30 dislikes at 9.03, that's the people that don't like me, but they can't cancel me because I'm in your bloodstream, all right? Anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I had to get that off, all right? So anyway, battery charging speeds could be faster, wireless charging speeds could be faster. Next, now here's something that I don't like, motion sense, all right? They took away motion sense, and if you don't know what motion sense is, let me pull that up for you real quick. Look, we gotta have a quick phone talk. Every phone has their, what I call, signature feature, okay? Galaxy 5 Gangster, the signature feature on this is the ability to use an S Pen and Samsung DeX, all right? Samsung DeX, it's like walking around with a laptop and a phone at the same time in your pocket. Not to mention all of the other regular features, but the signature features, S Pen compatibility, Samsung DeX. The Mi 11, signature feature, dual screens, all right, screen on the back of the phone. 
If y'all seen the Snyder Cut, you know you can play music, answer phone calls, text messages and all that. From the back of the phone, another signature feature, IR Blaster, thought protection, 120 times scumbag zoom. Okay, that's signature features. With the Oppo, signature feature, microscope camera. One of the signature features, that when I say signature features, I mean this way when you're sitting down and you're having a phone roll with your friends, your friend pulls out that Galaxy, they're gonna say, look, I'm using an S Pen, you can't do that. Yeah, well, I got an IR blaster, you can't do that. When you had your Pixel, you can say, yeah, well, I have motion sense, none of y'all can do that. Now, what's motion sense? Watch this. Take it over to YouTube Music. I'm gonna play some music. Oh, let me turn that shit. Love Sosa, right? Now, this is one of the features that I use so much, motion sense. Wop, wop, go to the next song. Wop, go to the next song. Wop. Now, so say you cooking, all right? Say you cooking, you got grease on your hands, and you want to go to the next song, bang. Okay, now, here's the way I use it. Now, look, some of y'all going to think this is a gimmick, but I always say this. It's only a gimmick if you don't use it. If you're using the shit every day, how is it a gimmick? All right? How is the IR Blaster a gimmick when every single time I travel and I stay in Airbnbs and hotels, I pull out my phone and change the TV on every single TV? That's not a gimmick. That's a feature. So when I'm playing video games, I usually have my phone on a dock because this is my work phone, so I want to make sure I'm getting my work emails and all that. So I have this phone on the dock. I'll be playing music. Got my two JBL Party Box 1000s blasting music. So I can't use the OKG, OK you know, the voice commands. I'm playing music. It's on the dock. Oh, okay, in the middle of a round, I could just go like that, switch songs, wop. You know what I'm saying? Motion sense, motion sense. Now, this feature did not slow down the phone in any way. It didn't make the phone lag or cause hiccups. I understand that some people might think it's gimmicky, but signature features, phones gotta have signature features. Let me get back to my song, bang. Gotta have signature features, all right? So they took away the motion sense I don't like that, okay? Google, I think that that, that feature would have just made this phone, it would have gave that fo this phone that little extra pop. Because a lot, one of the comments that a lot of people make about Pixel phones is that they're boring and plain. So now they did the refresh with the widgets, they did the refresh with the themes, but still it doesn't really have that signature feature. Now this phone does have some signature features, and one of them is just so OD that pushed this into my third favorite Android phone, but motion sense would have been a nice feature to have, all right? No motion sense, I don't like that. Next, now let me turn this music off for a second. Where, where, where am I? <laughs> let me turn this shit off. Okay, here we go. Okay, now this is another little kind of petty, but this is something else that I don't like. Pop-up windows. All right, now you do get some pop-up windows, if you notice. I got one pop-up right there. For text messaging, you get pop-up with your Facebook messaging. <laughs> Fake, <laughs> meta, your meta, well, not Facebook anymore, your meta messaging, I'm trying, trying to say that right, your meta, meta, bullshit change, meta messaging, but here's the thing, they should have the pop-ups like this for all of the apps, the same way when you take out your Galaxy phone, I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't like to just show y'all things, I like to show you what I'm talking about, all right, so there's this right here, let's open up in a pop-up view, and then we can minimize it, bang, the little Facebook bubble, I can have a whole bunch of these bubbles right here with a lot of different apps. I don't like the fact that this only works on a few apps. This should work on Facebook. It should work on Gmail. It should work on all your basic apps that you want to have popped up like this. Now, I do like the fact that you can pop up a text message, but it should be like that with more apps. Next. Now, this is something that I, I, that I finally figured that I don't like. And let me show you this. Screenshots. I, I don't like the way you do the screenshots on this. I don't like how you can't pinch the zoom on the screenshots. Now, shout out to the pinch the zoom boys. Y'all know who y'all are. Let me show you why. All right, so let's go to Instagram, right? Let's go to activity, right? Now, say I'm looking at activity and um, I got a message. All right, so, all right, so I got a new follower right there. Who's that? I want to get a closer look. I take a screenshot. What do you do? The first thing you do is you go like this. You pinch it to get a closer shot. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go to my iPhone. All right, let's go to same thing, activities. You take a screenshot, and then you go like this. Oh, okay, I, oh, I know who that is. Oh, okay, cool. With the Pixel, you're gonna have to do an extra step, all right? Now, what I do is I set my screenshot to go to clipboard, and then it brings it up again. Now I bring that same screenshot up in the clipboard, and then I can zoom in. Oh, okay, I know who that is. But I don't like that. It, you, you should be able to just take your screenshot. Hold up. 
or you could do screenshots like this also. You should be able to just take your screenshot and then zoom in. You ever been on the phone with your with your service provider and they say, oh, I need your IMEI number. And you're like, oh, bro, come on. Who, who can read all that? that let's, who can read all those small ass numbers? I'm old. All right, I'm old. I need the screenshot pinch to read numbers. I had a lot of, I, I use that feature way more than I should. I, I should just go get some glasses, but I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to reclaim my youth. Right, I'm still holding on to my 2020 vision from the past. You just got to do that extra set. Now, if it, now if you don't, if you want to know how to do that, just set screenshots to save on clipboard. And then uh, say, perfect example again, say you can't read that little message. You, know, you want to do your screenshot. Now I use, I use the volume down and, and power. When you go to screenshot, you can't pinch it, but you hit your keyboard, you go to your clipboard and bring up that same one and then you can zoom in on that message. All right, so screenshots for the pinch to zoom boys, y'all know who y'all are. <laughs> y'all be seeing people's pictures on Instagram and y'all gotta, you know, y'all wanna say, hold up, y'all gotta see if these sneakers is real or not. Hold up, you gotta take a screenshot and pinch in and pinch even more. The screenshot pinch would have been a nice touch. I don't know why you have to do a two-stepper. I don't like that. All right, next. Now, here's my last two petty gripes. No expandable memory. Now, that's not the biggest deal in the world. You know, I understand that flagship phones with expandable memory are basically being phased out, except, except if you're a real photographer and you're really into micro SD cards and you got a whole library of them, the Sony, all right, the new Sony flagship phones still have expandable memory. So as long as there's a flagship phone that has that, I gotta mention that. Now, if no flagship phones have that, there's nothing to talk about, but there's still flagship phones. If you really care about expandable memory, you're gonna have to get a Sony phone or you're gonna have to get a budget or mid-range phone. Now, you've noticed a lot of mid-range phones and budget phones, these Motorola phones, they still got SD card slots. If you're a photographer or if you travel a lot, okay, SD card slots might be important to you. I know somebody's gonna say, oh, Google with all this cloud storage. And all of the cloud storage ain't gonna help you when you're 30,000 feet up in the air and you're flying on Spirit or Peasant Airlines, you know what I'm saying, and you got no Wi-Fi, that's not gonna help you. Uh, you wanna edit your photos, you pull out your SD card, slap it in, edit it on your phone, you wanna watch your 100 episodes of Martin or Family Guy or American Dad. I got, I'm speaking from experience, I got SD cards full of these kind of episodes, so when I do travel, and there's no Wi-Fi, all I gotta do is pop that in and watch my movies, all right? So no expandable memory, not the biggest deal in the world. Same thing with the storage, all right? There's no terabyte version, all right? Apple Mafia, that's what I'm saying, man. There should be nothing on an iPhone that we don't have on Android phones, all right? So if an iPhone comes out with one terabyte, as an Android manufacturer, it's your job, it's your duty. It's your duty to at least match them. You might not have to surpass them, but we can't let the Apple Mafia have one foot above us. All right? we, we can't let that happen. So one terabyte would have been a nice touch. 512, that's, that's, that's pretty much plenty though. You got, a, you got unlimited Google storage all over the place. But me, I'm a traveler. All of that cloud storage don't really help me when I'm traveling. Okay, and the last one of my petty gripes as shoes comes in and, and ruins ruins this, ruins my whole table. I, I ain't gonna front. Shoes just came in so hot, kind of scared the shit out of me. Shoes, you, I told you to announce yourself when you coming up in here, man. What's wrong with you? Damn, yo. Did, did, didn't your mama ever tell you to make some noise when you come up in a room, yo? Damn, yo. Oh, I am your, I am your mama. I'm your, I, I should have told you that. All right, we well, get out of here. My last petty gripe is the night shots. All right, now the night shots, the exposure is just mad long. You know when you take a photo with an iPhone or any other phone at night and it says hold still and you gotta process that photo? The processing time on this is just very slow. Now the other night I was doing some night shot comparisons between this and the iPhone and um, we'll talk about that in a minute when I do the camera test. But the, the, the time that you gotta stand there and hold the phone, it's just a little bit too long. Right, it's a little bit too long, even though the pictures do come out dope. I just don't like having to stand there like, you know, looking like a noob, taking a picture. I right, hold still, hold still. Bang. That, the person is like, come on, man, what, what are you doing? Like the, per the person is smiling like, all right, all right. I'm like, well, I gotta take the picture. The, the exposure is just a little bit long. And that's it. All right, so that's all of my dislikes. Now, with that being said, do I like this phone? The answer is yes. I actually love this phone. All petty gripes aside, I love this phone. Let's talk about everything that I do like right after this quick commercial break. All right, y'all, so we back in. Now let's talk about everything that I do like. Number one, 
the price. 900 bucks, that's JR. I just right, like I said earlier, I hate spending a thousand bucks for a candy bar style phone. 900 bucks, Google is going in the right direction. Hopefully Samsung comes out to match them. And then after that, Xiaomi and all of these other companies start coming back out. The phone prices should start dropping, all right? Because we're basically running out of features and running out of stuff to add on the phones. The price, 900 bucks, the price is right. And the Pixel 6, now I do have one of those coming in also. The Pixel 6 at 600 bucks, that might be the deal of the year. All right, so when I get that phone, I'll do a little video on that. It's not gonna be as long as this one, but I'll show you that phone. We'll check a, take a look at the camera and all of that. But the price on this phone is right, all right? 900 bucks, this is a $900 phone. Right? You, you're not gonna buy this phone and go home feeling like, oh, I spent too much money. The price is right. Next, security, all right? Now, this is exactly why this has always been my work phone and this is gonna continue to be my work phone. With this phone right here, you're getting three years of guaranteed updates, five years security patches. My four, they're getting patches and updates up the wazoo. But this phone, the security settings just take it to the next level. Now, let me, I'll, I'll get rid of that little text message. The security settings take it to the next level. Of course, you can go to settings and tweak all of the options. But here's one that I like, mic access and camera access. Now, whenever you're using an app that has a mic or camera that can access your phone, you get that little light on the top. This is perfect for all of y'all savage scumbags out there. All right, shoes. <laughs> shoes did it again. Shoes doing some stalking shit today. All of y'all scumbags out there, if your significant other tries to put one of those tracker apps on your phone or one of those you know little little apps that can access your camera, access your mic, you know what I'm saying? Find out who you talking to. Believe it or not, they out there. And I can tell y'all a funny story. I'll tell y'all at the end of the video. Maybe I'll tell you right now. My homeboy, who shall remain nameless, his girl put one of those tracking apps on his phone. I'm not even going to say the name of the app or the, the situation because then they'll know who I'm talking about. But the, the easiest way to describe it is he came to me saying, yo, my, my shorty is always popping up where I'm at. There has to be some tracking software or status on my phone. She always knows what I'm doing. So I went through his phone, looked, and if you look closely, he had two, I'm not going to say the actual app. For example, he had two Facebooks. So I'm like, why do you have two Facebook apps in your apps? And one of those was, was tracking software. So now when you want to do your scumbag moves, you can turn off location, turn off mic, turn off camera. All right? That's a watered down version of thought protection, but that's high level securities. All right? This phone has Fort Knox level security on it. I like that. Security patches, updates, and access to the location, mic, and camera. This is my work phone right here. All right, when I'm working, I don't want nobody seeing my camera. When I'm doing sent, when I'm with sensitive clients, nobody accessing my mic. Perfect. All right, so security. Next, reliability. That's why I call this phone Big Bertha. This is your wife right here. You know how your wife is just extra reliable. Every time you need something, you sick. She's gonna take care of you. She's doing your laundry. She's watching your stupid ass kids. This is this is your wife right here. This is reliability. That's why this has been my work phone. Same thing with the Pixel 6, all right? The 6 Pro, extra reliable. Now, I've been using the review unit for about nine days. Every day, all day straight. The phone always turns on. The phone never, no lag, no stutters, no hiccups. It's reliable. The only thing unreliable about this is the fingerprint sensor. But when I'm in a house, I turn on smart lock. Who cares about the fingerprint sensor? Other than that, super reliable. All right, the reliability factor on this phone, and speaking from somebody who's been using the four, this phone is a year old. It still runs brand new. All right, so I'll, now I'm speaking in terms of the future. I can pretty much guarantee you that the Pixel 6 Pro is going to run like this because it's a Pixel. I can pull out my Pixel um, 3, and it still runs just like this. All right, so Pixels are known for reliability. This one is no different. Next, battery life. Now, I said this earlier, the Pixel 6 Pro is the Android version of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the battery life on this phone is just mind-blowing. But the Pixel, same thing. Now, it's funny. It's funny because when you first get your Pixel 6 Pro, and I had a lot of people that just got this today, they text me and was like, yo, is, is, I'm setting up the phone. My phone, I took it out the box, it was on 83. I'm setting it up. The battery was on 62. Yo, this battery is trash. When you first take it out the box, it's going to seem like trash because this is adaptive battery, okay? That's how this battery is able to achieve these phenomenal battery times. 
adaptive battery. You, in other words, you gotta use this shit. You gotta use it for a couple of days, and while you're using it, you got the Tensor chip, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. The, the chip is learning your phone, all right? The chip is like, oh, okay, uh, you, you one of them Instagram motherfuckers, you always on it, on the gram, okay. Cool, let me leave the gram running. You need your gram notifications. But it notices that, okay, you know, you, you haven't checked your Gmail in two days. I'll slow, the, I'll, let me slow the Gmail down. You haven't used this app, let me slow that down. Bas now, I'm just paraphrasing, of course, but that's basically what your battery is doing. It's learning your phone. So the first day I had the phone, I was like, oh, here we go. And in my mind, I was like, okay, this is the perfect reason why I like to wait to get my retail version, because I'm gonna bash this phone. I'm gonna bash this phone so bad for having a garbage battery. After the first day, I was like, okay, the battery, the first day I used it, I was like, the battery's trash. Then the second day, I was like, okay, okay, maybe it was just warming up. Okay, let me give it some time. Then the third day, I was like, oh, okay, wait a second. Now, here's a funny story. I was trying to drain the battery. I was trying to drain the battery so I could do my charging test. So I got on 25-hour aquarium. I'm, I'm you know, in a pop-up YouTube window. I'm playing games every time I put the phone on, maximize it to let the 25-hour aquarium play. I was like, okay, the battery's at 60%. Let me just go to the gym and come back. Why do I go to the gym and come back? The battery's on 53. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? How long is it gonna take for this battery to drain? Then I left the video playing all day in the bed. I'm, I wanna smoke a blunt, I'm watching TV, I'm watching Chris Hansen, you know what I'm saying, the Predator-verse. Yo, it took me so long to drain this battery. I took a nap and woke up, it was on like 6%. I'm like, I'm, but I'm laughing to myself like, okay. And I remember, now, whenever I do my videos, I specifically go on a YouTube diet. I, I don't watch anybody else's video because I don't want to know what anybody else thought. So that way could that, that could subconsciously influence my review. So I didn't want to hear what nobody else thought about the battery, but one of my boys did text me and was like, yo, I heard the Pixel battery is 22 hours. Can you confirm? I'm like, yo, all right. So, you know, that kind of put that in my mind. And then somebody else was like, yo, um, the Pixel, they only, they only, they charge it every other day. They telling the truth. You could, especially if you're not a, a heavyweight savage, you know, you're not on your phone all day, all night, you could charge this phone every other day, easily. You could probably get two to three days worth of battery with regular use, easily, easily. Bro, the battery on this is incredible. You just gotta give it time to learn your phone. Now I'm a heavy user and I still was, I'm still getting maximum battery. Like, let me put on a battery percentage real quick. Let's see what this one is at. Let's go to uh, settings. I don't know why my battery percentage turn, turned off. Okay, look, this one is at 88%. 88%, let's see, it's, oh look, 611. Yo, it's funny because that 611 is my birthday, but it's funny, this, this, I just, I just, it's so funny that for some reason, this happens a lot. A lot of times during the day, I just check the clock and it's always 611. Why? That's that's wild. Does that ever happen to y'all? Y'all check the time and it's your birthday? <laughs> that, that, that is so crazy. Anyway, <laughs> the talk is wrong with me. Anyway, all right, so it's on 88%. I took this off the charger at, mm, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, six now, maybe like 11 o'clock in the morning. All right, but the point is, and but I haven't really been using that, really just been thinking about shit that I'm going to say in this video. But 88%, the standby time on this is incredible. All right, if you take it off at 100%, you put it in the bed, you don't use it, you know, you, you fall asleep overnight, forget to charge it. You know, some phones, you, you fall asleep, you wake up, you, the phone is on 80%, you're like, how did I use 20% overnight? This ain't one of those phones. All right, this phone, standby time, battery time, excellent. Just give it a chance to learn your phone. Next, let's talk about the build quality. A1, okay? You got Gorilla Glass Victus. All right, you got the Gor Gorilla Glass Protection. Okay, it is water resistant. A lot of people, they say in this phone is ugly. I actually like this. I actually like this straight bar as opposed to, let me pull out another phone right here. Now look, here's another one that I like. I'm in the minority. I, now, this is, I hate, ah, I hate these smudgy phones. I'm in the minority, but a lot of people don't like the back of the Mi 11. The thing I like about it, and the same thing with the Pixel, is when you lay your phone flat, this kind of like lifts it up. So when you type it like this, you kind of get that. All right, my bad, y'all. Um, these videos be so long that my battery just died while I was recording. So I don't know where it died at, but I'll just try to recap. I was talking about the uh, build quality. All right, it's uh, premium. Glass, aluminium, Gorilla Glass, Victus, water resistant. 
the look. Some people think it's ugly. I think it's nice. I like the square panels on the back as opposed to these, you know, little square shells like this. It looks more uniform with the big stripe on the back. Not to mention, makes the back lay nice and flat. Next, let's talk about the feel of the phone. All right, how does the phone feel? How does the phone make you feel emotionally? You're gonna feel great. You're gonna feel like a nerd. And a lot of us that's buying these pixels, we're in the nerds, all right? Hashtag nerds unite. You got the tensor chip. Now, you, you ask somebody with the iPhone, what's the tensor chip? They never heard of that. You ask somebody with the Xiaomi, maybe they never heard of it either. You know, mostly people with the Galaxies and the Xiaomi phones, they just buying the trendy phones that's out. This phone is gonna make you feel smart. All right, you're gonna feel smart. Phones do have emotional feels. The same way you get an iPhone 13 Pro Max, you feel trendy, you feel uppity, uh, you know that all of your favorite celebrities, all of the singers, rappers, dancers, actors, you could go have a conversation with any of them. All y'all pull out your phones. Y'all all got the same phone, even though this one got a mansion in Beverly Hills and a Rolls Royce. You got an 86 Honda Civic, but we got the same phone. Uh, you're gonna feel nice and trendy. When you pull out phones like this, like the Galaxy, uh, you know you got Samsung Dex, you know you got the S Pen, uh, you know you're on top of the food chain. But the Pixel, what does, what does the Pixel make you feel like? Very smart. All right, you're going to feel smart, and you're going to feel like you're on the cutting edge because you know that you got the latest version of Google and Android before everybody else, okay? Everybody else is on Android 11. You on Android 12. And when Android 13 comes out, you're going to be the first one to join it. So all your friends, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I got, you know, this, I got that. Yeah, but you, what you don't have is the latest version of Android. Now, remember back in the days, I'm old school. Remember back in the days when that was kind of a big deal, right? When a phone went from Android cupcake to Android ice cream. You know what I'm saying? You, you remember, like, like I missed the good old days of phones. Like, when that new update came out, you was hype. You was hype. Now, from updates from Android to 11 to 12, they bring in little, you know, minor changes. But the Android 12 on this phone is sick. But anyway... Anyway, the feel of this phone, you're going to feel smart. You're going to feel like, you know, you're going to feel extra nerdy, which is a good thing. Right? You're going to feel like you're better than all of these these uh, peasants walking around with these phones without the Tensor chip in it. Right? Tensor chip, what's that? You got it. Right? And when somebody asks you what the Tensor chip is, just be like, chill, bro. You, you know, you, you're not ready for this explanation. Right? Your feeble mind cannot process this information. Just just know that it's not the Snapdragon. Right? That's all you got to say. Don't 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 start talking about AI learning and graphics cores. and all. Don't don't do that. Just be like, this is Tensor chip. What's that? Nah, bro, um, we don't have enough time for me to explain that to you. Right? Or you could just say, Google it. All right. Anyway, so the feel on this phone emotionally is terrific. All right, you're gonna feel like a boss. You're not gonna feel like you're walking around with some no-name brand Chinese phone. No disrespect to China. Shout out to my man Xi Jinping. Next, always on display. Now, although you cannot customize it, it is there. All right, it is there as opposed to this bullshit iPhone with no always on display. Now, y'all know I love this phone. Right, Apple Mafia. I'm just kidding, but. No always on display is just so, it's so 90s. I right, that's so early 2000s. You got your phone on a desktop dock like this. If your phone has wireless charging, chances are you're going to have a wireless charger. You got it on the dock. Don't you want to see the time? You want to look over in the middle of the night. You want to see the time. You want to see the date. You want to know what the weather is. You want to know if you got any notifications. Even though it's not customizable, it's still an always on display. And it's always on. Now, one of the rumors that people have that your, your Apple Mafia cats, they probably typing right now, put your fucking keyboard down, all right? I know what y'all typing. Yeah, but the Apple is smart. They didn't put it on because of screen burn. That's why they didn't put it because of screen burn. Shut up, all right? That's 100% cap. Stop the bullshit, okay? Now, look, a lot of people always come with that screen burn bullshit. I've had, I can't even count how many Android phones with always on displays and AMOLED panels. I've never had screen burn on any phone that I've ever owned. Now, of course, whenever I say something like that, somebody's typing, yeah, well, I had screen burn on my Galaxy S5. I had screen burn on my Galaxy Note, Note 7 before the battery exploded. I understand. I understand. When I say I never had something, I'm only speaking for me. But I had a thousand phones, and I use them all day, all night. I've never had screen burn on any phone. Okay, so not having an always on display, it, that it, that's no excuse. All right, there's no excuse to just say, okay, we don't have it because of screen, but that's 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 cap. 
All right, that's bullshit. But if you're gonna have an always on display, let me customize it. That's my only gripe. You do have an always on display, I do like that. Next, let's talk about the speakers. Okay, let me put my, let me put my little code in real quick. Let's take it over to YouTube. We gotta talk about the speakers because the speakers on this phone are terrific. I'm gonna pull up a little sound test video. Where we at? Let me let me find this real quick. Okay, here it goes. Listen to this. Let, hold up, let, right, hold up. Let, 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 let me let me pause. Let me bring that back in and do it correctly. I, I almost I almost didn't get my homeboy the proper inter, introduction. We got the official Flossy Carter sound test by my homeboy Mark Rubier. Let's get max volume. Listen to these speakers. Yo, sound test, Papa sound test. Everybody shut your mouth, Papa sound test. Time to test that quality of sound test. How's it sound, Floss? How's it sound, Floss? How's it sound now? How's it sound now? Does it sound big? Does it sound loud? How's the bass How's the treble How's it sound now? How's it sound now? That's a sound test. Nice and loud. Sound coming out of both speakers. You can feel the bass vibrating. How's the sound, white shoes? How's the sound on it? Shoes ain't listening. I love this video. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Rubier. Now, if y'all wondering why do I always let the whole video play, that's one of my motivational videos, and I'm going like this with my hand on the low. I love that song. Anyway, the speakers on this are excellent. Perfect for watching your videos, perfect for playing your YouTube music, Spotify, Amazon Prime, whatever service you got, you're gonna like these speakers. Now, speaking of speakers, <laughs> speaking of speakers, let's take a look at this beautiful display. All right, let's take a look at the beautiful display. This is how we're gonna watch our YouTube videos. We got the Flossy Sony video. Okay, let's get high refresh. Uh, uh, I'm high quality. Check this out. Basically bezel-less. All right, you got a little, a little chin. Punch hole camera on the top. But beautiful, look at this. Okay, let, let's, let, let's, let's skip forward in the action a little bit. Take it to the underwater scenes here. Look at this. Excellent viewing angles. This is beautiful. All right, so big, beautiful, quad HD display, 120 hertz refresh rate. I love it. Let's keep it moving. All right, so now let's talk about the processor, the Tensor chip. Now, it's just as fast as the Snapdragon Octopus. You know, we don't have to get into a big comparison of Tensor versus Snapdragon and all that. Just know that it's flagship specs, bro. Flagship specs is super smooth. It's gonna run just like any other Pixel phone. All right, 120 hertz refresh rate, that immaculate scrolling speed. Let's check the uh, speeds. Go to apple.com. Bro, you see that? <laughs> you see that? Look how fast that was. Of course, you got your split screen multitasking. So I got YouTube on the bottom, Apple on the top. Go full screen, just like that. Now watch this, picture in picture. All right, so the Tensor chip, super fast, super smooth, super responsive. All right, let me exit out of that. All right, let's do one more. Go to Samsung.com. Okay, now Samsung is a big website with a whole bunch of pop-ups and cookies and all that bullshit. Ridiculous. 
Okay, now, I'm not going to get into all of that nerdy shit, the Tensor, AI learning, graphics core, all of that. Bro, you don't need to know that. Uh, you don't need to know that, and no one really cares. I know when y'all was watching the presentation, if you like me and they were talking all the Tensor, you're like, all right, all right, all right, all right. What does it do? What does it do? Well, it does some dope stuff. All right, it does some dope stuff. Not only does it handle all of the processing and it's able to learn and adapt your battery, giving it that ridiculous battery life, it does some cool stuff. Now, one of the best things that we're gonna talk about gaming, I'll skip, I'll skip my usual format. Let's talk about the low key tensor feature. It's actually one of the features on uh, Google 12, but one of the features that make this phone so sick, and this is low key, my favorite feature. Now we all seen the Google Translate, how you can have somebody talk to you in Mandarin and it'll just translate right there and you can speak back. We don't need to demo that, I, but it works. But here's the one that I use the most. Let me, let me, hold on, let me, um, let, let me send myself a text message. All right, matter of fact, <laughs> you don't, look, you don't even want to read some of these texts I was doing. The Google text to speech is the best thing since sliced bread. All right, the best thing since pants with pockets. This is the best thing since power windows. Okay, now I'm old school. Y'all remember the roll down windows? I remember when you get in the car and it's mad hot, you rolling them shit down back. Power windows, you thought you was the man. The Google text to speech is 100% accurate. And the way that really sets this off is being able to say the word sin. That is low key, one of the best features of this phone. Now I'm one of those people that I'm always in my comment section. I'm always replying to stuff. Let me show you how this works. So let's go to, um, all right, my bad. I had to switch phones because I forgot to fully set this one up. Watch this. Now, this is what I mean by the low key dopest feature is being able to send text messages by using the word send. That is so underrated. Now, not only text messages, but it works in Facebook, works on Instagram. Okay, look, now somebody left a comment, said popcorn Tom. Watch this. Don't forget your thought juice, fire emoji. Send. Bro, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Yo, now, not only does the text-to-speech work flawlessly and works the best, but it captures my complete derelict hood language that I talk sometimes. Watch this, let me show you. All right, now this is for demonstration purposes only. Now I'm gonna do a regular one first. All right, my bad, I had to take a quick phone call. But watch this. Now, first, I'm gonna start with a regular message. Yo, bro, I'm gonna call you back in about 30 minutes. I just came out the shower. Send. All right, without having to touch the phone, so I could have had it on my dock. Now, watch this one. Now, I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna increase the the uh, the hoodness a little bit. Nah, man, I ain't fucking with that party. Motherfuckers over there getting shot, stabbed, locked up. Mad p cops out there. Man, fuck this shit. I'm just gonna go stay home and uh, jack off about three times and I'll call you back when I wake up. Send. Now, let's see if they copied that extra hood message. Nah, man, I ain't fucking with that party. You see the curse over there getting shot, stabbed, locked up. Man, cops out there, F this shit. I'm gonna stay home and jack off about three times and call you back when I wake up. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro. <laughs> Bro, now look, look, <laughs> that was extra savage. But if you could capture that kind of stuff, imagine this. Uh, you got your phone on the table like this. Okay, Google. Text Flossy Verizon. All right, but first you'll have to unlock your device. Oh, I forgot to unlock it. All right, let me unlock. All right, what's the message? Oh, let me. I, I leave. I leave it unlocked. All right, let me unlock it and do it again. So if I got my phone on the table and I'm just happen to be working. Okay, Google. Text Flossy Verizon. Sure, but first you'll have to unlock your device. All right, what's the message? Call me back in 30 minutes. I got you. Call me to call you by the name back in 30 minutes. Is that right? Hold up. I'm I'm wondering why do I I forgot how to say. All right, let's. I'm like, yo, am I in the twilight zone right now? What's going on? Right, let me turn this one off for a minute. Let me turn this phone off just for a hot minute. All right, let's do that again. <laughs> I'm like, yo. I think, okay, Google. Text Flossy Verizon. Sure, but first you'll have to unlock your device. Got it. What's the message? 
Call me back in 40 minutes. You'd like I me got to call you. Call me back, back in 40, 40 minutes. minutes. Ready to send it? Send. Now look, it just did that. Let me pick up my Verizon phone real quick. Now it's a it's a little bit. All right, call me back in 40 minutes. There goes that other call message. Me Verizon trap phone. All right, hold it, chill, chill, chill. What y'all, what y'all, yo, Google, man, yo, oh, bro. <laughs> All right, there's the this, there's the message, bro. All right, now we are getting a little sidetracked here, but the point that I was trying to make is the Google text to speech is epic. All right, it's 100 epic. It works so dope. That's why is this? You see what I'm saying? Why is this volume rocket still on this on the display? All right, let me get rid of that out of it. All right, let's get... <laughs> All right. Text to speech. I love it. And like I said, it works in multiple apps that you can actually send. Look, uh, your shit's your shit low, dog. Where did you get that video? Send. So now when I'm replying to my Instagram comments, this makes me want to use that feature. All right, so the, the Google text-to-speech is my favorite feature of this phone. And as a YouTuber who's always in the comments, there's nothing like being able to... Usually I have to type out a whole message, especially when somebody's trolling me. Ah, oh, fuck you, you broke-ass motherfucker. I got to type out that whole... Now I can just say it. Now I can really just say it to you. Like, so now I'm really talking. It's like, it's like I'm talking to my comments. I love this feature. I, I love it. Next. Let's talk about, now, I'm going to skip gaming, okay? Now, usually I play a little Asphalt 9. I'm going to skip that because I played it earlier. There's nothing to see. This is the Tensor chip. Take my word for it. You could game on this phone like a beast. And I'm also going to skip the RDA test, regular daily activities. I usually do that test for budget phones and mid-range phones because you want to see how they're going to actually perform in real life. You already know how this phone right here, this is a flagship phone. I... <laughs> <laughs> this is the, I right, pinched the zoom boys. All right, you know what I'm saying? This is a flagship phone. You already know how it's gonna be. <laughs> Halloween <laughs> versus Halloween, all right? But I'm um, saying 120 hertz, you already know how it is. There's another thing I wanted to talk about with this phone that has to do with the Tensor chip. Magic eraser, okay? This is not, this is, this is not a unique Android feature. If you got a Galaxy phone, you got Samsung's object eraser. But I wanted to show y'all something real quick. Let's do a side-by-side -side test with Magic Eraser versus Object Eraser. Now, I do love Magic Eraser. It is pretty sick. It is kind of mind-blowing. But if you had a Galaxy phone, you already seen this. All right, this is not new. Watch this. I'm going to do a little setup right now. All right, so check this out. Now, I got two boxes, and we got the phone in the middle. Let's take a quick picture. Bang, just like that. Now, let's take the same picture. With the Galaxy, bang, there it is. All right, let's go to gallery. Now here's the same photo. Now here's what we want to. <laughs> here's what we want to do. We want to get rid of that phone in the middle out of both photos. All right, so for the pixel, we're gonna hit edit. We're gonna take it over to tools. Take it over to Magic Eraser. We'll circle that phone, and voila, it disappeared. That's pretty sick, but check this out. On your Galaxy phone, make sure your labs are enabled. All right, we're gonna go to Tools. We'll update that later. We're gonna go to Eraser, okay? Let's erase that. Hit Erase, and bang. This one is gone too. Now, there's some debate on which one looks better all right, you're going to have to play with them both for yourself. Honestly, I think the Google does a better job. But it's still Magic Eraser versus Object Eraser. I think the Magic Eraser is a little bit better. Now, let's try that one more time. Let's try a different, let's try something different. Let's try something, let's try to erase these pixel socks. Okay, so let's go to, go to photos. <laughs> We're going to go to photos. Let's take the photo. Bang, just like that. Okay. Let's take it over to Edit. You're going to go to Tools, Magic Eraser. Now, the key to getting a good erase is just hitting the exact object. Okay, now, you see there's a little artifact right here. Let's, let's try that again. 
Sometimes you got to do it a few times. Sometimes it's better than the other time. You see that that one, this is not a good erase. Let's see, um, I'm sorry. I was clicking dot. Let's do it like that. Okay, now it did erase, but a little artifact on the table. Let's try the same thing with the Galaxy. Go to camera, okay. Oh, my finger got in the way on that one, hold up. Bang. Okay, let's go to the pictures. Okay, let's go to edit. Make sure your labs are enabled. Okay, let's hit erase. Okay, now this one actually looks better than the Pixel. The Pixel had a lot of black on the table. This one, it looked better. So I can't really say which one is better. They're pretty much both the same. Matter of fact, okay, let's do a tiebreaker. Let's do a tiebreaker. What do we have? Let's do something easy, okay? Let's do this little wireless charging pad. All right, now this should be easy. All right, so let's go to camera. Okay, let's get a nice picture. Bang, okay. Now let's try that one more time. Okay, we're gonna go to edit, tools, magic eraser. Now this one should be easy. Draw a little circle around that. Whew, look at that, see what I'm saying? Now that one was, that one was poof, right, right out of there. All right, so let's try that on the Galaxy. Okay, now we're trying to get the same photo. Okay. Bang. Okay. Let's go to edit. Scroll over. Okay, here we go. Erase. Poof. Just like I said, I'm saying. I said, see, it, it all depends on the actual photo. All right, Samsung Knight, stand down and stand by. You got Magic Eraser 2. It's just called Object Eraser. Again, if you look on your phone and you don't have Object Eraser, all you have to do is this. All right, when you take a photo, let me show you something real quick. All right, for your Samsung Knights, when you take a photo and you go to it in gallery, you're going to hit those three dots. You're going to see something that says labs. Make sure you turn your labs on. All right, it might be on when you hit those three dots right here. You'll see labs. Now you see labs. Make sure you go to labs and turn on object eraser. But nevertheless, I digress. So that's one of the things that I love about this phone. Magic eraser. Now take some old, take some of your old photos. I found this dope photo of white shoes actually sitting in front of my orange Pixel 4, and I, re I removed the pixel out of it, and it really did an excellent job. I'll post it when I show you the pictures, or maybe I won't. But uh, <laughs> but it really just made the object disappear. All right, so you got your your ex boyfriend, your ex girlfriend, but you got a picture of you and them, and you got on a fresh fit, and they they ugly faces ruined in the photo, right? Because you know once you break up with someone, they all become ugly to you. You know what I'm saying? You got the ugly person in the picture. You want to get rid of them. Magic eraser. Next. Now let's talk about the camera. This is arguably the best point and shoot Android camera out. Now it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles, no macro, no microscope, no periscope, you know, like no all of these fancy features that a lot of these other Android phones have. I said periscope. I mean, I'm <laughs> I was thinking of something else. No macro, no no uh, cinematic mode, no pro mode, but point and shoot. Now I wanna show y'all something real quick. Let's go to um gallery. Let's go to, this is the photo right here. Now, first of all, you have these photos. You have something that's called motion blur. I'll upload that in my picture. Look at the background. So I took a picture of my steering wheel while I'm driving, my steering wheel while I'm driving, and I blurred out the background. So the background is in motion. This is kind of like a night shot photo. You're gonna have to hold still. Look how dope that looks. That is sick. But let me show you the photo. Now, I'm, I'm gonna upload this one too. But this is the photo that really started the oohs and ahs when I was out at dinner. Let me find that photo. I was out for Maya's birthday party, right? Now watch this. This is why I say this is the best point and shoot portrait mode. Shout out to Jada. This is Amaya's friend, Jada. Both of them were best friends all the way through high school. Amaya went away to college in Florida. She went away to college. I believe it's in Washington. I could be wrong. But this is their first time seeing each other since, you know, both of them. So this is at Amaya's birthday weekend. So everybody's like, oh, how cute. The two best friends back together. And so behind this photo, y'all can't see, but it's a hundred of, it's, a, it's all of Amaya's uh, aunts and uncles. Everybody want to get a picture of, of the Bopsy twins together. So everybody's like lining up, taking turns to take pictures. So I was doing my pixel testing that day and 
<laughs> of course, my brother got the iPhone 13 Pro Max. He like, let me take the picture because it's going to be the best one. And I'll, I'll, I'll airdrop it to all of y'all. Da, da, da. I'm like, bro, fall back. Watch this. Yeah. So I took the picture. Now, the funny thing with the, pic the, the pixel cameras is when you take a picture, watch, I'll do it for you live right now. When you take a picture, it takes a second for that picture to process. But then when it processes, it just, it just blows your mind. All right. So let's do a little picture right now. All right. Now you see when you take that picture, it looks funny at first. This is not a real portrait. You can't really tell with this one, but when I first took the picture, I'm like, I showed it. It just looked like a regular picture. But after it processed, look at that portrait mode. All right. This photo looks beautiful. Now, a lot was said also about Pixel being more black people friendly. Now, <laughs> now look, man, I, I really, we don't want to get into all this racial shit, but they, they did make a point. All right? They did make a point because a lot of phones, including the iPhone, it tends to make people that are dark skin look ashy or look washed out. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the reasons why, like a lot of times when I take pictures with Amaya, I got to take 200 pictures because she's never happy the way the photo, the lighting. She always got to get the right lighting. This, that. So Google's actually saying that okay, then you know they'd be a more more uh <laughs> more Negro friendly. These phones are more Negro friendly. I, I I appreciate that. But this picture just came out beautiful. I can show you some more pictures. Now I'm gonna show you these pictures when I do the actual bro, you know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, let's just talk about the camera real quick. Like I said, point and shoot. This is arguably the best when it comes to portrait mode. Now, camera and pictures is very subjective. All right? It's all subjective. Personally, I like taking my pictures with the Galaxy phones because they tend to make everything look more vibrant and more colorful. And some people would say oversaturated. But I like that. Like when, I, when I'm taking a picture of a cheeseburger for Instagram, I want that shit to look oversaturated with cheese. I want it to look extra juicy. iPhones tend to be really lifelike. All right, if the picture, if the grass is stale green, the iPhone's gonna make it look stale green. Android phones tend to saturate it and make it look extra lush. Some people like that, some people don't. Same thing with the Pixel. It's all subjective. You may like, you may like uh, these photos more than other people. You may not like them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some test pictures and videos that I took, but I'll also give you my opinion. Usually I don't give my opinion. I like you know you to be the judge for yourself. The camera on this phone is incredible. All right, now. I'm not going to say it's the best Android camera for me because I like the scumbag zoom on the Mi 11. This phone does have um, 20 times zoom. It's pretty scummy. And the thing I like about this zoom, it does stay crystal clear, but it's not the 120 times scumbag zoom all right, from the Mi 11. It doesn't have portrait mode video like the Galaxy. So this is not my favorite camera. But when it comes to portrait mode shots, this is the best. Night shots, I'm still going with the iPhone 13 Pro Max for the best night photos around. Anyway, take a look at these test pictures and videos for yourself.
All right, now, as far as accessories, I got the speaking case lineup coming this week. I'm just waiting to get my Google 6. Then I'll show them all in one video. And I got the Google Pixel 6 Pro case. Okay, so here's the minty green one. We'll slap this one on. Now, this is just a gel skin case. If you hate curved displays, it's gonna help give you less accidental touches. Looks real nice. And this is the one I just got in the mail today. Let's see. This is the, okay, this is the clear one. Okay, flick of the wrist. Okay, now the clear one is pretty dope. Now I could actually write the clear one on the brown, on the uh, black phone. But if you got this sort of sunny, you're gonna want this clear case. This one is nice. I think I paid 30 bucks for this case. Let's see how the green looks on the sort of sunny. And we'll see how the clear looks on the black. Okay, so here's the clear on the black. Let's see, let's see how this green in. Okay, then it turned into a little fluorescent kind of color right there. It is what it is. All right, so I like these cases. Are they worth 30 bucks? Uh, nah, not really. You probably be better off getting a speaking case. Like I said, I got the speaking case lineup coming this week. All right, so last but not least, let's talk about the floss factor. Now, if you're new to my channel and you don't know what the floss factor is, that means when you go to a restaurant and somebody pulls out the Mi 11 Ultra, Somebody got the Oppo X3. Somebody got a OnePlus 9. All right. Somebody got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Where do you fit in on the food chain? Are you on the top looking like an apex predator? Or are you on the bottom looking like a gazelle grazing on the grass? Well, in my personal opinion, the Pixel 6 Pro is on the top of the food chain. All right? This is an official apex predator. This is a lion. This is a tiger. This is a bear. All right, <laughs> these are all Apex Predator phones. The floss factor is there, okay? The floss factor is there. The only person that can shut you down is the dinosaur, all right? The Tyrannosaurus Rex, if somebody comes through with the dinosaur phone, all of y'all gotta fall back, all right? This is the big boy right here. This is the, the Galaxy Z Fold 3, this is the big boy. But, like I said earlier, my phone rankings. All right, let's shout out, let's shout out the five families of Android, okay? This is the five families, the Android Commission, okay? You got the Xiaomi Warlords, okay? You got the Samsung Knights. You got the Google Gangsters. You got the Oppo Regime, okay? And you got the OnePlus Warriors. This is the commission right here. Now, of course, you do have the Apple Mafia, Okay, they're not part of Android. They are different. They are, they are a whole different section on their own. So Android, five families, we got to stick together. All right, this is the five families, the commission. We got to stick together to fight the Apple Mafia. Now, the Apple Mafia, they sitting pretty right now. They got 120 hertz refresh rate. They got cinematic mode on the camera. They got the best battery in the game. They, they coming in on our territory. All right, so the five families, we got to sit down and have a meeting. All right, right now, I'm putting... The Xiaomi Warlords at the beginning, at the top of the families. All right, this is the this is this is the John Gotti of the family. All right, this is the John Gotti. This is the Casiglia. <laughs> Samsung Knights, stand down and stand by. Okay, Google Gangsters, Oppo Regime, and the OnePlus Warriors. Now, on a side note, I'm hoping that the Huawei Dynasty can make it back into the commission. As of right now, they're not in the commission because they don't have Google apps. So I made a promise to myself, and I'm making it to y'all, this year, for not, not this year, next year, for 2022, whether, whether Huawei is back in the commission or not, I'm going to get a new Huawei phone because I miss having Huawei phones. I think Xiaomi was like, okay, well, now that Huawei's out the game, they just pressed up on Samsung and just knocked them out of the top spot. You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember, Huawei phones are beast. So hopefully, Huawei can make it back into the commission. But right now, let me know what y'all favorite phone is. All right, let's take it over to the comments section. Now that I got the Google text of speech, I'm going to be going extra hard in the comments. Usually, I just be like, salute, cheers. But, you know, I try to just thank anybody who leaves something nice. I try to thank them. Anybody that, you know, asks a question, I try to give them an answer. But after a while, all that text and text and text. Now that I can just fire off texts with 100% accuracy, I, without having to touch the phone, you're going to see a lot more responses in my channel. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this phone. But this is the new Big Bertha, all right? This is the new Big Bertha right here. This is my new work phone. This is new old reliable. If you bought the 6, the, if, if you was thinking about buying the 6 Pro and you're on the fence, get your ass off the fence, get in the game.
Okay, get in the game. This is one of those phones that you're gonna love. All right, great camera, great display, great battery. You're gonna love having the latest, greatest version of Android. You're gonna love the text to speech, Google Translate, especially if you have family or friends who speak another language. You're gonna love using that feature. All right, anyway. Pixel 6 Pro, this is another fucking movie, I know, I'll be rambling, I'll be having fun, hit me up in the comments, let me know what y'all think about this, and also, if y'all got any um special requests for the cases, uh, right now I only got the, the speaking cases, and I might get a few, few no-name brand ones, also, I do have some more iPhone and Galaxy cases, because um, a lot of y'all pre-ordered those phones and still ain't get them yet, so let's get into a few more case videos, hit me up in the comments, let me know what y'all think about this. And if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you don't like the video, you know exactly what to do too. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see I hold it down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Boxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know. Stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys to laugh. Oh yeah. Special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter. That's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I'll see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah. One more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes, pitch and be rolling. It's your boy Flossa Man. Do something. Spot when the beam up. Energize. I want everybody to subscribe to Flossie Carter for the real tech reviews. Now, Flossie Carter, we know you Flossie. Now, guess what? I'm flashy. Money made all day, the one and only. Flossie Carter, you part of the money team.